What's up guys, my name is Ryan45678 and welcome back to the Edger Bike Project. Last time we successfully drilled a hole in the jack shaft and this time we're going to be working on these things that I just made. I took a plate, a steel plate that I had and I made some pieces to mount the bearings because I have, if you haven't seen that video, I showed you my pillow block bearings. They have two holes and a bearing that holds onto a shaft. So I need holes on these, there's four of these. Plus there's another one that I'm going to have to do a little bit different for the jack shaft because I need to also... I've got the, I've got some pieces to weld around it for the actual torque converter to mount on, but I don't know exactly how that needs to go yet, so I'll do this one later, I think. I've also got the swing arm pieces. Two of these, one for each uh, swing arm, is going to be a 12 millimeter hole or slightly smaller. I think it was about 15, 30 seconds if I have a drill bit like that on one end. Uh, the other end goes into a three quarter shaft that goes into the bearing, so I'm going to drill a three quarters hole here on each of these. So what I've done, hopefully you can see, uh, these will be the smaller ones. So the 12 millimeters gave it an inch. So that way it's, it's almost half an inch, but not quite. So it gives it like half an inch here, another half inch of structure. That'll be good. Uh, and for the other ends, one of which is clamped already, I did the same thing, but I gave it an inch and a quarter for the three quarters to have enough room. Go ahead and start getting that ready. Move this over and move this in some and pick the right drill bit, which in this case, uh, three quarters. Move this thing. If I can find a, uh, I, I know I can find a three quarters. It'll be a question of whether I can find a 15, uh, yeah, 15, 30 seconds for the, uh, the smaller one. Close enough, we'll get it with the drill bit. Okay, yeah, so we're supposed to have a 15, 30 seconds. I don't know if we actually have one, but uh, right now, this is gonna be fun, uh, drilling a three quarters hole. So you know what I think I'm actually gonna do? is not drill a three quarters hole on that end. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to weld that onto the shaft that I end up using. So, cause it really, there's no reason to drill a hole now that I think about it. Because it's gonna go on a shaft, I can just weld the, th I'm, if I put it in the hole, I'm gonna have to weld it anyway. So why not just weld it flat? Uh, so that's what I'm gonna do with those. So I'll take these and find a 15, 30 seconds a bit and use that. And here we have a winner. I don't know if you can read that, but that does say 15, 30 seconds. First, uh, we need to align this properly. Move this way, there we go. And I'd, I'd rather err on the side of giving more material this way, because if I cut too close to here, it's gonna be weak. I think that should about do it. So uh, I'll go ahead and cut this. Ah, uh, that's not good. See how that's wobbling? Can't have none of that. Much better. Like with the lathe, you want to go slow and steady. And you don't want to just bear into it constantly. You want to get up every now and then so it gives some... I think my camera cut out in the middle of that, but as you can probably hopefully see, there's a nice clean hole through that one. And we'll go ahead and move on to the next one. All right, so I finished these two. As you can see, they've got a hole with plenty of room for for strength in the back. Uh, and I've left these these other two for the three quarters welding later. Uh, so next we're gonna work on the bearing plates, which are basically like this piece of cardboard. They're exactly the same size, and I just need holes in those exact spots that'll fit these bolts through them. I'll use this cardboard as a template, mark them, and go from there and drill, uh, first figure out what size that is, and then uh, and drill some holes. All right, so we've got one of these plates, and we've got the template right here. It's not perfect because it obviously I can't cut them perfectly exact, but we're going to do a circle, circle, and the best center dot that I can manage. And that should be, well, it's not perfect. I could probably get a better idea of it when I actually go to, to line up the, the drill bit. So we'll do these and start drilling. All right, so I got all four of these and I'm gonna clamp them the same way I did before. Change out the drill bit after I figure out what size they are. So these are about 0.37. So I need to find out a, a similar size to that. So it looks like 3 8 is about 0.375. So 3 8 is the size we need. And it looks like I've got a 3 8 right here and it just so happened to be one that I guessed might work. Good that way. But good that way, so it's it's not going to be exactly perfect. I'd like it to be, but uh, it's not really feasible. I mean, I could if I really, really wanted to, but it'll be fine. So let's go ahead and cut this one. 
check where our thing is. It's about right. Yeah, we're pushing our, our piece. It's because I I can't cut these perfect with an angle grinder, so it's gonna happen. Still doing it. Still doing it, you stupid. So what I can do is maybe use some shims, but I don't know if I want to use brass and mess it up, so I'll see if I can use some shavings. I don't know if this will work. I'm gonna try. Maybe? I don't know. No. Of course it didn't work. There we go. I think we finally got it. No, it's still moving it. It's not as bad. I guess slowly it'll be okay. I'll have to move it every now and then though. Yeah, like now. It's really annoying. I think maybe if I just go slow enough, it won't move it. I don't know. Yeah, it should be working. That should be good. Alright, that's one hole done. On to the next one. And then on to the three more plates. So really, all I need to do is scoot this forward and line it up straight. All right, that should be good. So I did have to shift it over a tiny bit because the holes weren't exactly straight with this thing, but the piece isn't straight either. So I, I'll go with the hole before I go with uh, before I just shift it over because the distance between them has to be exact. Otherwise, it might screw up. I don't know. All right, I'll show you guys when I'm done. All right, we got one down, and as soon as this cools down. Uh, I'll show you guys the fit, but I'm going to get to these. Alright, so I've successfully drilled all four of these out. And this is the first one. I'm going to make sure it fits. It looks like the bolts fit, so that's the exact right size. That's perfect. Uh, let's test a bearing and make sure it'll go in there. Right there. Looks like that hole lines up pretty good, if you can see that. That's going to be awesome. Yeah, that's perfect. I just need to find some bolts that'll actually fit this on there good. I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead and check one more of them. The other two should be fine as well. Uh, but they're still hot. Looks like it'll work. Wow, these turned out really good. You can see how, how well, it's not perfectly flush, but it, it'll do the job. This one I just drilled, it'll be really hot. There we go. There we go, perfect. I now have faith in my ability to use a template for screw holes. Because in the past, it is that my track record for that has not been so great. So that's good. I'm happy. Happy, happy, happy. Cool. So now we're outside and I'm going to show you what I've got for the mounting plate so far for the, the torque converter. So this is gonna be the jack shaft bearing. That's why it says JB, like that. Um, and I made it a little bit shorter because this needs to be, um, okay, this is, this is where it, it gets a little bit tricky. I'm going to have to figure out a way to mount this, but it needs to go below. So I made this shorter because it doesn't obviously need to, the other ones needed to go on a pipe like this. So I needed quite a bit of room. This one doesn't. So the bearing goes here. It's going to be something like this. And I'll have to drill the holes after I weld it, because shh, because I'm not exactly sure how it's going to go. That's how it's going to mount. This thing is going to be here, which is perfect, and it's going to be mounted on this. So what I actually ended up doing was uh, leaving this piece long. That way, depending on how these fit together, uh, this thing can actually weld here, which it looks like it's going to go just about right. So if I do that, like that, and I'll have to center this. Uh, I do actually have the paper template. That looks about right. I might, I'm probably gonna actually put this bearing here. No, uh, this, this is gonna be more like here. Really, what it could actually be um, flush with it, just about, because that's what it needs to be when it mounts. So really, this could work right, right here. So what I think I need to do is, if I had a way to tack these up without finishing them first, I would do that. Yeah, that's going to make it hard to drill, although I can, I can do it. I know how, it, I have an idea. Let me go grab the actual plate that it's going to go on. All right, so I'll show you that in a second. I'll show you the mounting plate, but what I found... And what I'm gonna do really quick is drill these holes. Um, I found that if I keep it about here, 
and not totally flush, about like this. Uh, that gives the mounting plate enough room to keep it flat and level against it without these kind of screwing with it and stuff. So I'm gonna do that. And then from there, I'll figure out exactly how to weld the, the pieces around it. It's gonna really depend on how they line up with the mounting plate. So I'm most likely gonna weld those first before I actually drill them. And that would be the, the best way to get a good fit on it. So I finished this piece. I kind of screwed it up a little bit and got this, this one of these holes a little bit too close. So I had to use, so, well, the drilling didn't work to try to drill off to the side. I ended up having to use a file, uh, but I finally got it. So that one is set. So now I'll show you guys how this thing is gonna mount and how it's all gonna come together for the, the torque converter. Here is the torque converter. That's what I need to get this set up with. And you can see why I wanna drill these after I weld them together, because it could change very well, very easily. This has a pretty good gap right here. Uh, it'll line up just about perfect. with No rubbing and or nothing. And this, I basically need to mount flat to here, so uh, this is going to be difficult, but it can be done. I may end up doing is mounting this sideways and then just conforming these to it and welding something to, to fit it on there, or like this, maybe. I could probably have them like this, just welded right up against the edge, and I may do that, like that, like that. I might actually have to trim this down. So if I did want to do that, I could... Let's see, I don't know if I can tape these, but I'm gonna try. So I think either way, no matter how I do it, these are gonna get mounted, they're gonna get welded together like this. Whether or not they fit here is another story, but they might actually work okay. Yeah, if I'd known that before, I would have done it differently, but it seems that I can... I could even get away with different mounting holes, they don't have to be all the same. I could do one, two, uh, three, and four. I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to, I'm going to do that like that. And if you get this flush basically up against there, I'll weld that later. So what, yeah. So what I'm going to do when I get a welding day, which is not today, I'll weld these up, not drill holes yet. Uh, I'll figure out how exactly how I'm going to mount this to it, which is going to be like this, but with this uh, on this plane right here. Actually, that's wrong. It's going to be like this. That's more centered. And I'll have this like one of these ways. And I can figure out a, a whole configuration once it's all welded together. So I think that's going to work perfectly. So yeah, that is this besides not being welded together yet and as well as the swing arms. I'll need to cut some notches in the swing arms themselves later. And then I'll weld those, and that'll be the swing arms. And I could actually, yes, uh, actually, after that I need to weld, weld, get the bearing, the other bearing plates situated and welded to where they'll hold the shaft straight. Uh, first, I'll probably do the second jack shaft because it's really long and I'm gonna have to cut some off. And I'll probably use the excess for the swing arms, so if I can keep the bearings on the inside, so say if these, if imagine these were the swing, the the rear supports, I could put the bearings on like this, or I could put them like this. If I can get them both like this instead of like this, I'll have to, I'll be able to use less of that jack shaft and cut off cut off enough to be able to use for the uh, for the the swing arm pivot, so I don't have to go buy some three quarter inch rod or another jack shaft. So yeah, uh, once I have that, I can do the swing arms, like I said, and get the the jack shafts actually welded to it. Then I'll have swing arms. Uh, what I need to do after that, because I'm not exactly sure how, uh, what size to cut and everything, is the, the mounting brackets for, for the rear shocks. So I'll decide how to do that once I have all that done. And one thing I didn't show you yet uh, that I'm gonna be welding next is, uh, see these pipes over here? These are going to fill in this. It's basically going to go this way, down piece here, and two Ys there. Uh, but yeah, that'll be next time. Yeah, thank you guys for watching. I uh, hope you all enjoyed this video, this update on the Edger bike. And yeah, I'll see you guys later.